All right. Thanks, folks, for joining us here this evening. Tonight's webinar is focused on athletics at Groton. It's part of our kind of Tuesday night webinar series we are hosting this fall where we dive into a different area of student life here at Groton. My name is Kelly Walsh. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Groton. I'm also the head varsity field hockey coach. So as you might be able to tell, athletics and being a student athlete have always been something that is near and dear to my heart. And I'm excited to share the Groton experience here with you a bit this evening. Um, but as you can tell, I'm not alone up here. Um, I'm joined by a number of fantastic current students, alums, coaches, and our athletic director, Bob Lowe. In a few moments, I'm gonna pass things over to Bob to give a kind of a brief overview of athletics here at Groton. We'll then have our panelists introduce themselves and then we'll start to answer some questions. I've prepared a few questions that are typically, or that are common questions that we often see to start, um, but I would encourage you after we get through some of those to type some questions in the chat box and uh, we will work to either answer those via the chat or perhaps pose them to the larger group if we think there's something that might be useful to everyone, for everyone to hear. Um, we'll do our best to get through all of these questions, but we just have about 45 minutes here this evening before um, we let everyone get back to their kind of busy lives on this rainy evening here in Groton, Massachusetts. Um, but We'll talk more about it at the end. I strongly encourage you to reach out to a coach or perhaps some of the captains on a specific team or program area if you are interested in learning more. So with that, I'd like to introduce um, Mr. Bob Lowe. He is our athletic director here at Groton and he is also the boys uh, varsity lacrosse coach, teaches English and lives here on campus with his family. Bob. Thanks, Kelly. Uh... Welcome everybody. It's great to be here. Um, also nice to see uh, familiar faces who are alums and obviously current students and a lacrosse colleague, uh, uh, Coach Candell as well. So I'm the, uh, as, as Ms. Walsh mentioned, I'm the um, lacrosse coach and the director of athletics and uh, I'm humbled to be the AD here at, at Groton School. Groton is in the Independent School League, which is comprised of 16 teams, uh, roughly eight boarding schools and roughly eight day schools uh, surrounding the Boston area. Um, we have uh, a, a pretty brimful athletic program for, quite frankly, the smallest school in the league enrollment wise, if that makes sense to you all. Um, we have 22 sports over three seasons and 46 teams total, which includes the varsity teams, the JV and the third teams. Uh, as I said, we're in the ISL, which is extremely um, competitive in every sport, top to bottom. Um, and it's amazing. And it's a privilege to be in the league. It's a tall order to be in the league um, and a challenge that um, our athletes uh, look forward to and work hard to prepare for week in and week out. Uh, there's no game that is easy in any sport in the ISL, pretty much across the board. That's exciting for a coach. It's exciting for an athlete. Um, Groton believes in the teacher coach model. And what that means is uh, most of our coaches are either teachers or faculty or staff here at Groton School. We believe in the multiple contact mentor where you're not just showing up at 3.30, blowing a whistle for two, for two hours, then heading home and you don't see the students for the rest of the evening, let alone the rest of the day uh, before practice. Um, it's part of the ethos of the school. It's part of the mission of the school, the multi-contact educator. And it, it, it's a little bit of a dying breed, to be honest, and Groton holds, holds on to it as much as we possibly can. We also hold on to the notion of multiple sports for our athletes. We celebrate athletes and, and, and love athletes who uh, play multiple sports. Um, we believe um, you know, balance is a means to pursue excellence. Um, specialization is also a, a way to, to, to achieve and aspire for excellence. We love that notion of balance across the board. Um, 
We have other offerings in the afternoon that are sort of non-athletic offerings like yoga and strength and conditioning and, and, and conservation core, community service, dance, um, theater, um, um, faculty sponsored activities, which means a faculty would uh, help sponsor a student um, to engage in an activity that we don't offer. But most of our students at one point of their careers here at least uh, wears a jersey and we're, we're proud of that. Um, I guess I can stop there. That's a lot. I, I, burned, I burned some time there for you, Ms. Walsh. I apologize. That's fantastic. Awesome. Thank you, Coach Lowe. We appreciate it. If we could now have um, some of our other panelists introduce themselves. Um, Anthony, you are first on my screen, so I'll turn to you. And then if the rest of you would like to jump in after him, that would be great. All right, sounds good. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Anthony Romano. Uh, I'm from Amherst, New Hampshire. Uh, I just graduated from Groton School this past June, and I'm at the University of Richmond right now. I play lacrosse here uh, for the Spiders. And uh, at Groton, I came as an eighth grader. Um, I played football all five years. Uh, I was a captain in my senior year. Uh, did JB, I did JV basketball and managed for them and uh, Coach Maz's team in the winter for a few winters. And then I was also a um, five-year lacrosse starter for Coach Lowe and uh, two-year captains, a junior and senior. Um, that's pretty much my overview uh, about lacrosse and um, athletics at Grog. So, uh, and yeah, excited to be here to talk with you guys. I can jump in. I'm Gracie. I also graduated the class of 2021. Um, <clears throat> at Groton, I played varsity soccer and lacrosse my four years. I also played a little bit of hockey here and there. Um, outside of athletics, I um, participated in the choir. I was senior prefect. I was part of um, the environmental group on campus. Um, yeah, that's what I did. I'm now at Middlebury College playing lacrosse. Following the lacrosse theme, I'll jump in. So I'm Annie Kandel. Um, I know some of you from the admission office. Um, I contact with you and maybe met you on some tours, but uh, more importantly tonight, I am the girls varsity lacrosse coach. Uh, I've been at Groton for four years um, and coached for a hundred years before that. Um, I am the parent of a current Groton athlete and a graduate uh, who is off playing sports in college. Um, thanks for tuning in tonight. I hope that you'll get to see, uh, most importantly, what it's like to be an athlete at Groton from the student perspective. Um, I think these, these folks will do a great job giving you that info. Uh, hey everybody, my name is uh, Aiden. Uh, I am a current six former or senior at uh, Groton. Uh, I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, and I came in as a new fourth former or uh, in sophomore year. Uh, uh, in the athletics for Groton, uh, I'm the uh, varsity uh, ice hockey captain, uh, and I help Miss Walsh as I manage field hockey uh, in, in this fall. Um, and then outside of athletics, um, I am a head of business and management club. Um, I am part of the diversity and inclusion club, and uh, I participate in the sustainability club. I guess I can jump in next. Um, my name is Jack. I'm a fifth former here at Groton, um, or a junior, um, and I'm from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Um, at Groton, I uh, run cross country, I play squash, and I play tennis as well. Um, outside of sports, I write for the Circle Voice, um, I'm a peer counselor, and uh, I'm a member of the Speakers Committee. I can go next. I'm Callie Messina. I'm currently a senior at Groton. I've been going here since eighth grade. I am captain of soccer and basketball. And in the spring, I've done lacrosse and track. Um, outside of athletics, I'm a diversity inclusion member and an admissions prefect. And I'm from Auburn, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Karenna. I'm a fifth former or a junior here at Groton, and I'm from Tingsboro, Massachusetts. I came in second form or eighth grade, and I've been on varsity soccer and hockey since eighth grade. Outside of athletics, I'm part of the Student Activities Committee. That's pretty much it. Uh, hi, I'm AJ Colarusso. I'm a senior day student from Lemons, Massachusetts. I came to Groton in third form, and uh, in athletics, I'm a captain of the varsity baseball team. Uh, I'm a manager for the football team. I've played a little basketball and soccer. 
uh, outside of outside of athletics, I'm a, a dorm prefect and on the community service board. Awesome, thanks, AJ. So as you can see, these students are clearly very dedicated to not just their athletics, but other areas of student life here on campus, um, but obviously quite talented on the field, in the rink, um, or wherever else you might find them. So my first question for you all, given what you just shared with us here this evening, is how do you balance your academic, your schoolwork, and your other interests here on campus? Uh, I can start. Um, for me, I think I think balance is really integrated into the the schedule and the system of Groton. Uh, like Mr. Lowe was saying earlier about the coaches, how Groton really stresses the duality um, of the coaches being an educator and a coach. I think that's the same. Uh, that same system applies to the uh, athletes as well, being a student as well as an athlete. Um, uh, our games only occur for the most part on Wednesdays and Saturdays, which are half days, uh, which allow you to stay in school uh, and make, make sure that you're not missing any class. I know for me, that was a big change. Playing hockey in California, uh, I had to miss a lot of time from school to travel to different rinks across California and across the United States um, to play games. And so that was one of the main reasons why I came to Groton was because of that balance that's already integrated into the schedule. Awesome. All right, here's another question for you all. Um, what is your favorite Groton athletics tradition, either kind of on a broader scheme or on a team that you specifically played on? Um, I think that my favorite tradition is definitely St. Mark's Week. So we have rivals here at Groton and St. Mark's, and we always have our week leading up um, to our big game, which is always played on a Saturday. We have a spirit week. So it gets like the whole school involved and we have um, different like spirit days uh, and definitely like everyone comes out and supports everyone at our game. So that's my favorite thing to get all the hype and it's super exciting. I also have a tradition kind of more niche to my basketball team. Uh, every year my our coach takes us to a game to watch an alum play who now plays basketball in college and it's we miss practice that day and it's it's really fun. Hey, that could be you next year. Um, I know for uh, the lacrosse team, we always take a spring trip, uh, spring preseason trip. Both boys and the girls teams do this. Um, we usually went out to Arizona for a week and did uh, spring training practice, scrimmage other teams there. That was fun. And also uh, football team, we actually started a new tradition when we were there uh, during St. Mark's week, um, probably not liked amongst some of the faculty members, but we'd actually go to practice. We'd have to practice. Uh, after our last full kind of practice of the year, we'd go to dinner uh, in all of our full gear. And uh, that was actually a lot of fun. Um, we definitely had some, turned some heads when we got in there. We were a little muddy sometimes, but we always made sure we cleaned up. We were very nice and had great relationships with all the lunch ladies and people who worked in the dining hall. Um, but that was a fun tradition that uh, me and my friends laugh and I always look back on. Uh, during St. Mark's week. Uh, that's when we, that is Karina talked about. Yeah, jumping off of Anthony, um, for the cross country team, uh, every fall um, before the season, we take a trip up to our coaches' um, house in Maine, uh, Mr. Capen, um, and we run on the trails of uh, Acadia National Park um, for four days and get ready for the season. And it's a great time um, to bond as a team, um, get ready for the season, um, and really just uh, have a fun experience with some friends before school. Ali, Gracie, and Karenna. Um, just remind me, the last time we played St. Mark's in soccer, who won that game? We did. <laughs> I won the water. scrimmage this year. <laughs> and we won the scrimmage. Fun fact, last time we played them, we played them on our first like scrimmage of the year and we beat them and then we beat them in the regular season. So this year's looking good. Does someone want to elaborate a little bit on what St. Mark's weekend looks like here at Groton? Yeah, so the like I said, the beginning of the day, it's St. Mark's Day. So we have like 
our spirit day of St. Mark's Day. So a lot of people like to wear gras and merch and like zebra patterns. And then from there, we all have games, whether that's at St. Mark's or here alternates. Um, but you can take fan buses. So we're really getting like people out there supporting us. And like St. Mark's takes fan buses here. And so just this really big rivalry. Um, and one of my favorite traditions too about it is um, all the varsity sports that win their games uh, participate in the cart pull. And so we get pulled around in a cart um, if you win the game, which is super fun. So I've been pulled around once from my third form, my freshman year when we won. And then there's a bonfire at night for the seniors to be tossed up. Yeah, I was just going to add the, the one St. Mark's week that I've been a part of uh, was at St. Mark's. And I mean, the amount of support that Groton showed on the other campus was uh, uh, was crazy to me. Uh, it felt like the entire school was there, um, especially for the hockey game. The rink was packed from boards to the door. So um, uh, it's definitely a, a tradition that every Groton student uh, takes very seriously. And the reason folks you're hearing why so many of these students have only had maybe one or two St. Mark's days is because last fall and winter, we did not have interscholastic athletic competitions. Um, we did have a modified spring schedule, um, but this year we are back um, to what looks and feels almost like normal where we have games on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And so we will have our fall St. Mark's uh, weekend coming up in just about a few weeks, which I know I'm really excited for, and I think the excitement is building here on campus as well. Um, another question for you all, um, and this is for coaches and players, what is kind of your relationship like with your coaches and coaches vice versa? What kind of relationship do you have with your players? Uh, I think I think Mr. Lowe really touched on this before that um, your coach is sometimes not only your coach but your teacher and maybe a dorm head or, or a fac or faculty member outside of that. So I think you really interact with your coach in many different ways. I know for me, my uh, cross country coach um, has been both an English teacher um, and a dorm um, affiliate for me. Um, so you're able to really interact with your coach in many ways, which I think improves your relationship on the field and off and allows you to perform at a better rate, have more fun as a team. Um, and I've so far in my experience at Grand, it has been incredibly positive with the support that has been provided from coaches um, to the players um, in all ways. Yeah, for me this year, uh, uh, Coach Riley, who's the coach of the hockey team, is my dorm head. Um, and this year and last year, um, uh, I've had multiple dinners with him. Uh, I, uh, if I see him just walking across campus, uh, I'll stop and have a conversation with him. It's, it's a very uh, close and personal relationship. Yeah, kind of what Aiden and Jack said. Um, I mean, Coach Lowe, he was not a lacrosse coach, but he was also my advisor. Um, so you take a bunch of guys in our group. And if, for those that don't know, like advisor groups, like you get assigned like a faculty member, a teacher um, on campus, and you're in a group with maybe five or six other students. And uh, every week you usually meet and uh, kind of discuss whether you need academic support or just to catch up and hang out. Um, that's what your advisor group is. And so I not only saw a coach, uh, on the field in the spring, but also weekly and at nights when you'd have me and our other advisors uh, or advisees over for dinner or at the breakfast in a diner down the road. Um, and same thing for like all the other coaches that, on the teams that I played for, um, really personal. Um, some of them are my teachers and uh, all around great friends who I still keep in contact with um, even after graduating. So it's a really awesome bond you get um, being at a small school, small school athletics uh, with some great coaches and great people. I mean, I can speak to that briefly as well. Um, on the one of the assistant coaches uh, for baseball, Mr. Bannon is my advisor. And I've also had him for two different Latin classes, my freshman and my senior year. Um, so that just goes to show you how close our relationships can grow with our coaches who happen to also be our teachers and advisors. Um, I've, I've uh, created a great relationship with Mr. Bannard um, and that uh, definitely uh, helps me and, and translates to the field and and you know my academic record with him as well.
Go ahead, Annie, if you want to share a bit about the coaching experience. <laughs> um, it's the reason uh, that I love to coach at Groton um, so much. These kids have just, um, they, they become really part of your family. Um, and uh, we're, we are a close-knit community, certainly. Um, and being around during the day, I get to see them all the time, um, which is also fun, dining hall and just walking around campus. And um, during COVID, we got to see each other all the time. <laughs> we were really tight. <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're wonderful kids. And um, whenever we need help with um, anything, uh, they are there. Um, I think the dynamic uh, at Groton, um, certainly, um, there is uh, the setup where the kids in power are actually the ones doing most of the helping. So what I mean by that is we're not saying, the kids aren't saying to the freshmen, hey, bring the water, get me this, um, you know, you do that. They are the ones being the helpers. Um, so Gracie Mumford as a senior was always the one getting the balls for the rest of the team. Um, she wasn't you know, assigning that to somebody else. Uh, there's definitely a culture of um, we're helping each other and if I can help you, I will do it. Wonderful, I could not agree more as a coach. Um, they are truly a pleasure to work with um, across, across all aspects of the fields. And I'm always amazed too. It's like I say something once and it just, it happens. Um, and it's just makes, um, practice and the day so enjoyable. And it's always my favorite part of every day here at Groton. Um, alums, I'd be curious to hear how um, did athletics at Groton prepare you for college and beyond potentially? Um, my Wi-Fi is a little spotty, so apologies if I cut out. But I guess what I have noticed most is um, time management. Um, lacrosse being a spring sport, um, I'm not in season. We've, um, I do have team practices um, or some lacrosse come in almost every day, but I have a way more time on my hands than I've ever had before, especially at Groton. Um, most of which, or it's not alarming, but it's, I just don't know what to do with it sometimes because at Groton our day is so um, regimented. Um, but definitely I find myself um, engage like able to engage with parts of the community that I didn't expect to simply because I can I know how to balance this practice time and my classes and I can socialize and go to clubs so it's it's been a really fulfilling and enriching experience so far I mean I'm on week six but um yeah it's been great and definitely just having the support and knowing um how to engage in a team culture that was um as enriching as it was in Groton and I can apply those skills here um, that's been really useful and it's, we've already built such a great community as a team here on campus. And I'm feeling grateful that I can participate in that, um, with skills that I learned at Groton. Yeah. Um, I think Gracie emphasized, um, already being able to manage your day personally. It's, it's very important. Um, we have a very rigorous schedule. And um, you got to be able to manage it as well, because no one's really, you have, like you said, advisors and a lot of, you have a lot more resources at Groton to help you out. Whereas, you know, now in college, it's like, okay, I mean, you got to kind of figure it out on your own. And so um, I have no problem, you know, going to study hall at night, you know, us athletes are required to get like six hours of study hall a week. So I always make sure, all right, you know, I got to cut my time out of this day. Maybe I have more time on a Monday than a Wednesday. Um, just kind of figuring out what fits best for me. Um, you know, doing that for five years has really helped me. And so uh, it's little things like that, you know, having to go to study hall as a lower schooler, uh, being in a dorm, um, even that helps. Cause I mean, some of my friends came in and they, they have no clue here, like, you know, what to do or even, you know, how to like, what they should bring to like, bring to the shower. So like, it's kind of crazy to see that. Um, so those little things actually that might seem like a basic part of a boarding school experience go a long way. And I think also the interactions I would, have to have with adults on a daily basis like I'm a lot more comfortable talking to my coaches and uh, people I meet than I think others around me are and that's like not to say like I'm better than them it's just brought and prepared me a lot from having such close as we talk about teacher relationships with the students then being pretty much everywhere you go um, I'm able to really communicate well and have a great relationship 
relationship with coaches that it's definitely more professional level now. So I think that is a big part of it. Those few aspects, there's definitely a lot more that go into it, but definitely being able to manage my schedule because it's more sports now than academics where at Groton, it was more academics than sports. So um, those, those key aspects have definitely gone a long way so far. Yeah. Um, just to touch back on it, Anthony mentioned just feeling like, you know, more than other people when you first come in and feeling more comfortable. I found that to be huge. It's the intangibles of, oh yeah, like I know, like this is my dorm room. I can feel comfortable in this space that's away from home. Or if you're a day student, you can just feel comfortable on a campus with a lot of people. Um, and just, yeah, having that experience of being away and being independent translates more than I could have ever expected to school. I mean, it's a prep, like Grant is a preparatory school for college, but it really has set me up at least for so much success. Um, I don't know. I feel very grateful that um, Grant and particularly in athletics and academics has just paved the way for a really great experience so far. Well, we wish we could have you both back, but we're thrilled that you have gone out into the world and done so well. Um, if anyone that's in the room or, uh, or at Groton currently or has moved on wants to briefly touch upon um, their college process, if they're going through it or have gone through it and share um, what they would like to about that process, that would be great. I can start. Um, so I, Middlebury is division three, um, which means the, in terms of recruiting, it's a little bit later than D1. Um, and I knew pretty early on that I wanted to go D3. Um, so that allowed me to focus on academics a lot longer. Um, and for most D3 programs, academics always comes first. Um, that's part of why I chose it. And so that was really helpful. Um, and it's very stressful and adding on, it really ramps up our fifth form junior year, um, as most people who have been recruited here know. Um, but it definitely, um, yeah, I mean, it's more in the schedule um, and it adds to your weekly kind of load at Groton, um, which can be a lot, but a lot to handle. Um, but definitely it was um, worth it. And having those, I built the skills, the time management skills in my first two years um, and so when the recruiting time did come around, I was able to manage it pretty well. Um, and it's stressful, but it's so important to remember to have fun with it. Um, I think a lot of people nowadays get so caught up um, in, oh, I have, to, I have to make it to this one school. I have to do this and this. We're just enjoy the process, enjoy being able to play. Um, those, that's my two cents. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, it's definitely still a challenge. Like, by no means is it like, oh, it's a cakewalk here, compared to God. Um, but I think kind of reemphasizing the not having the shock of having to adjust so much um, to being so independent is definitely like the best thing that I've gotten out of my time abroad and then translated here at Richmond um, because I definitely have more ath athletics requirements, but it doesn't mean that like I still don't have to go to class and do my homework and study for tests like or coach really emphasizes that you know you got to be both like you're here to be a student and an athlete um so I mean honestly it's been kind of nice um because you know not making it seem like rotten like all you ever do is homework but like it is as you probably all know it is a rigorously academic school and um I think seeing that difference now where maybe I had as a freshman in at Groton, I had five classes a day and now I have two classes a day so I'm able to manage my time better and you know maybe now I have an hour block instead of using another class to go to something I got and now I have it as a time to get homework done so um, all of that work and stuff you have to put into over the course of four years and like it's nothing to say that you know it's a gloomy four years and it's really just all academics like there's so many fun aspects that we kind of already touched upon in athletics alone um, but sort of having that prepares you so much already because you don't you're not shocked when you get here uh, when you get to college and I know Grace you said the same thing but you really already kind of prepared for that and by no means makes it cakewalk, but you're definitely way more prepared. Mentally. Great. Well, here is um, a question I think that is on a lot of folks' minds in today's day and age. 
Um, those of you who are at Groton or have gone through it, how do you balance if you do um, club sports and life here at Groton? And what is that process kind of like for you or tournaments or showcases, things like that? So um, in my second form year, so my eighth grade year, I actually did two club sports. I did club hockey and club soccer. Um, and I was definitely able to manage both of those. Um, my big thing is definitely communicating with faculty and your teachers of when you're going to be missing, if you have to miss classes or any other commitments. Um, and so that's been my biggest thing is just staying on top of your work. Um, so, but after my eighth grade year, I didn't continue with hockey. So I've just been playing club soccer. Um, and honestly, I've been able to manage my time really well. It goes back to um, what Anthony and Gracie were even talking about with just having a structured schedule. Um, and I even like find times, like if I'm in the airport, I'll get my homework done. There's definitely like different ways you can manage it. And your teachers are always there to help. So like, even if you miss something, like you can work around that or like um, they're always there to meet with you. I know um, my eighth grade year, I, for Latin, I would always, before I would miss a class, I would always go and meet with my teacher before I'd miss a class. And then when I came back from a soccer showcase, I would go meet with her again. Um, so I think it's definitely manageable. Uh, I've played uh, club or uh, travel baseball, which is um, heavy in the summer um, and in the spring a little bit, but it, it came down to, um, you know, managing my time well during the week so I can have more time on the weekends, Saturdays and, and, and primarily Sundays um, to go out and play. Um, teachers are willing, you know, to, uh, to accommodate missed classes, but, um, it, you know, uh, frankly, it's up to you to get your work done and to, and to, uh, and to manage your time well um, and, and uh, to be responsible and, and upfront with your teachers. Um, but it's manageable and um, it's, it comes down to, a, you know, a choice of how uh, responsible and dedicated you want to be in managing your time. Great. Here's another question kind of on a similar tone for you all. Obviously, you have to do something each afternoon at Groton, and that may be kind of your primary sport or interest, or it may not. So what opportunities are there for you to kind of for example, maybe someone like Aiden, like get on the rink or get in the gym when you're helping manage the field hockey team um, or things like that, if you guys can elaborate there. Yeah, so um, uh, as, as a hockey player, uh, uh, I really do want to get on the ice in the fall. And as a team, we really want to try and get on the ice as quick as possible. Um, and so Groton, like a bunch of other uh, boarding school, doesn't keep their ice down year round. Um, so when we do get on campus, um, there is a bit of a wait period for, um, for the ice to go down. But once it does go down, um, we hold open skates uh, uh, before classes on Wednesdays and in the afternoons on specific days uh, uh, throughout the week and on the weekend. So um, those are optional, but um, a lot of kids uh, we'll go out there and uh, we kind of just run our own drills. The coaches aren't allowed to be there. So um, we kind of just have fun and get back into shape um, for uh, in preparation for our season in the winter. Um, and then uh, for off ice stuff, uh, uh, I've been able to manage field hockey. And um, for the gym this year, uh, there are specific open gym times. Uh, so I'm able to go before classes um, and before chapel if I want to. Um, to uh, to use the weights that 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 the gym provides, or uh, there's time after classes uh, and at night uh, up until seven o'clock, I believe, um, in order to uh, uh, lift weights, run, do different things like that. So uh, uh, there are a lot of options for you uh, to do outside of a sport, uh, out, outside of your sport or a sport that you're doing in a different season. Yeah, I've had a very similar experience um, <clears throat> in the off season for tennis. Um, I run cross country in the fall, um, but I've found that I've been able um, and we've been able as a tennis team to um, play on Sundays, play on the weekends, um, play on Wednesday mornings when we have classes that start late. Um, and we can also utilize we have as a tennis team, we have eight indoor courts um, when the hockey rink is not up. Um, and in the winter, when the hockey when the ice is down on the hockey rinks. Um, we're able to utilize some um, courts nearby, um, indoor courts that um, day students sort of 
um, take us to. Um, so there's definitely opportunities um, both at Groton and outside of Groton um, to meet as a team, to play as a team, um, and to keep up um, with your sport um, when out of the season. Great, thank you all. I think something that uh, is front of mind right now, likely for all of you, we've got about two weeks left in the regular fall season here at Groton before ISL playoffs. And then we will start to transition right before our Thanksgiving break or holiday, which comes at the end of November to winter sports. Um, and those will go throughout December and January and February and into March. And then we have our spring sports when we return in kind of March and April and May. So um, the weather is certainly starting to feel like fall here. Um, and we were comparing earlier notes before we got on about some snow up in New Hampshire in the Vermont region where some folks are located. Um, so certainly front of mind as we think about staying in our current seasons, but also preparing for what's next. Here's kind of a fun one for you all. Um, can you share a time that you tried something new uh, a new sport perhaps at Groton or a new afternoon activity. You're all obviously quite talented in the sports or the areas that you play. Um, but I think trying something new is one of the best parts of boarding school and you never know what might happen. My eighth grade year, I played JV lacrosse and it was a lot of fun. I've never played lacrosse before. I've strictly played mostly hockey and soccer. Um, so it was definitely a fun time. and. It was really um, cool to see other people try and get out and try the new sport. And it was nice to just like have fun. I mean, varsity sports are super fun too, but it was fun to like be able to try something new. And like, it was okay that I like wasn't that good <laughs> because I had never played, but I had so much fun and I, can, I was going to do it again my freshman year, but then with COVID I didn't. And I even did we did like a two day um, sport thing in the fall. So I, I did lacrosse then too. So it's definitely good to like pick up different things. Yeah, my, uh, my first year here, I did cross country in the fall. Um, and I did find out that I was not a runner um, uh, in the end. However, uh, I really did enjoy the experience. Uh, Jack definitely outran me and outperformed me in every race. But, um, but I did meet my roommate um, who I've been with the past two years uh, through cross country and I've met some of my best friends through cross country. So um, it, it was definitely worth the experience and worth trying out. Yeah, I, um, I had played hockey before, but um, I decided sophomore year to try it out again, even though it had been over, I think six years since I had played. So I, um, I was on the JV team and it was, the most fun ever. It was great um, and very relaxed, but also we just had a really good time on the ice. There were people who didn't know how to skate and were learning to those like me who had played before. Um, and I got, it was, it was funny. I got pulled up to varsity um, one year um, before COVID hit, which was really fun. Um, and so it was great to be able to play um, on another varsity squad and opened up a lot of opportunities um, to be and play with new people, so. My freshman year, I tried track, um, which was interesting because it's a lot harder than just running, I learned. I had to do the hurdles and triple jump. Um, I was not very good at it. I thought I would be better, but uh, it was a fun experience and I love the team. Uh, my third form freshman year and uh, fourth form sophomore year, I tried um, third soccer and thirds basketball, which is a level below JV. There are no cuts. Um, so it was something I decided to try and I had a lot of fun and I met a lot of great friends. Um, and it's obviously, it's always been a great environment to explore new things and, and, uh, and, and try new interests. So as you're hearing from all of these panelists here, there's typically a varsity, a JV, and sometimes a thirds teams for all of our different levels. And so if you are interested in trying a new sport, there is a level that's kind of appropriate for you to do that. Um, and like I just said a few moments ago, I think that's one of the best parts of boarding school. Um, we don't have any rowers here this evening, but oftentimes students will start rowing here at Groton and will experience great success um, and head on off to do that after Groton as well. 
Um, I coach field hockey, as I mentioned, and oftentimes we have a lot of ice hockey players that will pick up field hockey in the fall. Um, so you never know what might happen. And as long as you're open to trying new things, um, it can be a lot of fun too, as you heard. So this is probably one of our last questions um, here for the evening. I heard a couple of you mention that you were on varsity teams as eighth graders. And I think that's something that's really unique to Groton. Uh, we do have a very small eighth grade and the eighth graders can be on varsity teams. Can those of you that uh, played varsity or came to Groton as an eighth grade speak just quickly about your experience? Yeah, I think it's great about Groton how you can step onto campus and be a part of a team. Um, doesn't matter what age you are. Um, and for me, it was really great since I was in lower school um, and especially during soccer preseason, I didn't really know anyone. So the team welcomed me and there was times that I'd have dinner and lunch with them. So it really, to them, they didn't even like see me as someone that was really younger to them. Um, so it was great getting to be a part of that team and being valued on the team. And like sometimes um, they'd even treat me like their little sister, which was nice. Like I've had a few friends that like graduated and I've still kept in contact with them. Um, so just the relationships that I made have really been so great. Yeah, I think, uh, oh, sorry, I cut someone off. Oh, you go ahead, Anthony. Oh, okay, sorry, Callie. Um, kind of just reiterating what uh, Corinna said, uh, that first preseason um, coming in the, in the fall as an eighth grader, and really for any new student, everyone uh, is allowed to attend preseason. Uh, that was huge for me. Staying in dorms with the guys, meeting people on the team, and then getting extra practices in with the team before everyone else got on campus was awesome because when kids in my dorm came a week later, and everyone new started to show up, I already kind of knew where to go on campus, kind of got a feel for it already. So that was a huge advantage. And um, me being a small eighth grader, I had no idea what I was in for on the football team, but um, that didn't really make a difference. Some of the captains, um, they're still like my best friends to this day. And uh, I look up to them as uh, older siblings. Um, I've never had an older sibling, but I consider some of those guys my big brothers. So um, it's awesome. And that's a great advantage of coming in and I mean, whatever, whatever new student you come in as an eighth, ninth, fourth, former, uh, really whatever, you, you can still have that preseason. But um, coming as an eighth grader, that was especially nice because I was only 14 years old and playing with 19 and 19 year olds. So it was intimidating, but uh, not for long as everyone there was there to support you and uh, really welcome you as a family. Yeah, I would just echo them. It's just really nice to get acclimated, especially in the fall. And I also did varsity basketball as an eighth grader, which is also a good experience. But um, yeah, some of the friends that I made when I was in eighth grade who were freshmen are still some of my best friends today. Wonderful. Well, I would like to give a huge round of applause to our panelists here this evening. Thank you so much for sharing a bit about yourselves and about Groton and athletics here. Um, to everyone that joined us, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to put in the chat um, our athletics interest form. If you haven't already, I strongly encourage you to fill this out. Um, this is a great way to kind of get on our coaches' radars as you're thinking about Groton. Um, and then our coaches' contact information for each individual sport is listed on the website. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and send them an email to learn more about their program or their sport. And I'm sure they would be happy to chat with you in greater detail. Um, we will be hosting some smaller Zoom sessions throughout the remainder of the fall and the winter to get to know um, coaches and captains on a smaller level. And we are also welcoming spectators to campus if you do want to watch an athletic contest. Our COVID-19 spectator protocols are on the website, so just be sure to check those out before you come visit. Once again, thank you so much to our panelists and thank you to everyone that joined us here this evening. Take care and have a good night.